Okay, my name is Darren Monkton. I'm Professor of Human Genetics at the University of Glasgow and my group has a long-standing interest in understanding the genetic basis of myotonic dystrophy and we've worked closely with the MDUK over a number of years in a number of different projects trying to understand the variability of the disease and how we might use that information for improved uh, prognosis, uh, improving the efficiency of clinical trials and understanding the basic biology and genetics of the disease. And can you tell me about any particular trials that, or projects that are being funded by MDUK? So at the moment we've just started a, a new project funded by MDUK where we are collaborating with a group in Canada where there is a, a very high incidence of myotonic dystrophy and they uh, have a large team there of clinicians and social workers and lots of other people involved in monitoring those families and uh, helping them in terms of managing the disease but also measuring how the disease uh, progresses over the years. So they have lots of great clinical data and our research is to now try and to match that with the genetic data. So they've been sending us DNA samples and we've been looking at the genetics to try and understand how the genetic variation correlates with the symptomatic variation that we see in those families. And what kind of impact do you think this whole project will have? So, so one of the things about myotonic dystrophy is it's an incredibly variable type of muscular dystrophy. So it varies from a very severe childhood form of the disease to a very mild late onset adult form of the disease. And it varies not just in the absolute severity and the age of onset, but in the absolute symptoms that individuals experience. So any one individual's set of symptoms will be very different from another's. And that obviously makes it very difficult in terms of then trying to predict for anybody who's newly diagnosed what range and severity of symptoms they're likely to get. And in terms of offering advice to couples in terms of reproductive choices again, etc., what they might expect in, their, in any children. And it also makes it very difficult in terms of trying to do a clinical trial in understanding whether the drug has really had a positive effect or not because individuals are so different in their underlying course of disease. So if we can understand what the genetic basis for that is, and we have good reason to believe that that's largely driven by the form of the mutation that's inherited and what other genetic variants those individuals inherit, then if we can understand that, then we can offer more accurate advice to individuals and, and families and also improve the efficiency of the clinical trials that are, that are coming up in the next few years. Obviously, in the, in the longer term, we also hope that, again, by understanding that basic biology, that will actually also reveal new ways in which we'll be able to target uh, the basic mechanisms that are going wrong in this disease to develop new treatments for this particular condition. And why do you think um, Muscular Dystrophy UK's funding or supporting scientists like yourself is so important? Well, absolutely. Again, we, we cannot do experiments uh, without the funding to, 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 to enable us to, to buy the reagents, to pay the staff in the lab who actually do do the experiments. So without that type of support, then those experiments are simply not going to go forward. And if these types of uh, experiments aren't done, then there are clearly going to be no new treatments developed and no new cures for, for these types of diseases. So it's absolutely crucial that you know, we get that type of support to enable us to do these experiments. And finally, can you tell me um, why do you think something like the Scottish Conference is so important and what people get out of the day? Well, obviously the Scottish Conference for MDUK is a fantastic forum for bringing together people with a range of different experiences of the impact of, of muscular dystrophy. So that obviously includes primarily the, you know, the families and individuals affected by these conditions, but it brings together healthcare professionals from a you know, range of different areas and also with the, the clinicians treating those individuals and the scientists such as myself you know, trying to develop new treatments and understanding of the disease. And bringing all of those people together is absolutely a you know, multi-way exchange of ideas and understanding. It's, you know, I think it's important for the families and individuals affected to, you know, to recognise that you know, there's a lot going on behind the scenes in terms of research and things, trying to develop new treatments and that. But equally, it's important for people like myself to, you know, to meet families and find out yeah, really what it's like to, to live with these conditions. Obviously, it's very motivating to meet new families and to be able to, you know, to try and understand you know, how we can, hopefully in the long term, impact positively on the, the life of, of these individuals.